Hello, good morning, how are you? Good morning, how are you doing? Terrific. Terrific. So, um, shall we begin? Let's get started. Let's dive right in. So this is a situation I think that everyone encounters. The uh, issue of when there's a disagreement of any kind, whether it's at home with friends, family, in at work, you know, sometimes there are disagreements and there's a need to apologize. But some people find it difficult to, uh, to apologize and some others, you know, are left kind of holding the bag of someone, you know, treated them unfairly uh, and didn't apologize. So this is a conversation that I'm excited to have with you. I am too, because, you know, um, it's true, you know, like I used to, not as much now, but, it, you know, when something rubs you the wrong way, and especially when you know where you or you feel like somebody owes you an apology, it, it, it just continues to ruminate in your head, right? It just it keeps going on and on and on in your head about what happened, what you could have said differently, or, um, you know, what triggered everything and, you know, really puts you in a bad mood, ruffles your feathers, whatever you want to call it, right? Right, and, and you're carrying that weight. Mm -hmm. If you're in an interaction where uh, you know, things went south in communicating and either you feel someone owes you an apology or you yourself owe the apology. If that doesn't get reconciled and remedied, then both parties are carrying the weight of that, like, fracture. Right. And, and I think that um, when you do that, you are no longer in the present. You can't enjoy what's happening in your in your in 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 your life that day, or maybe in a couple of days. You can't practice gratitude, which is fantastic for your immune system, not just for your, uh, you know, your your state of being. You're you're not, um, you know, you don't interact with other people at your best anymore. So it's something that if you can get around which we'll have a conversation about, um, will definitely impact your daily life and what's going on at home and at work or wherever you are, right? Absolutely. And and it, it's, you you just use the word get around, mm -hmm. but I, I see it more as going through mm -hmm. because you need to actually deal with the conversation and that's communication, right? Sure. Correct, you're absolutely right. Let me bring up our first slide. Yeah, and so I think this is a great slide um, because it can shine a light on why someone in, in your life finds it so hard to apologize. Um, and I think many people will resonate with some of these reasons like fear of rejection um you know if you're feeling unsure and insecure in yourself then um it's harder to apologize because you're already um on unstable ground right 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 you you it, it's hard for you to move forward if if you have an underlying fear of not not being accepted and this is really um you know this is something that a lot of people carry including myself you know um we all want to be liked and when we step into our own um there's more people that 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 don't like us and and it's it's um, it's uncomfortable but it's also freeing in a way that allows you to be authentic, right? And when you fear um, 
when you, when you have that fear of rejection, what, what, you know, what you have to understand is that there's a part of you that you've been rejecting and that you need to accept. And so it's okay if they don't like you, it's more important that you like and respect yourself because if you, if, if you fear that rejection, um, it influences you too much in what you say and what you, it, it, it limits you in so many different ways and how you interact. And when there's a part of you that knows you're not being authentic, there's a part of you that continues that line and makes you more, um, more vulnerable and more fractured and, and really more vulnerable to, you know, uh, other people's, responses instead of you focusing on your own responses and focusing on your own values and beliefs and being kind and compassionate for yourself and others. Yeah. And I, I'm going to circle back on that because I think it's really worth repeating. Um, the most important thing in terms of like fearing rejection and feeling um, insecure is learning to love and accept yourself. Mm -hmm. That if, if for anyone listening, if you don't have that, that's, that's a place that requires your attention. That's a place to start loving and accepting yourself uh, with, you know, as opposed to seeking validation uh, in an outer manner from other people or by acquiring things, for example. Right. But let's let's get back to the conversation. Let's get back to the focus. We're going to have to have another conversation about accepting yourself and tools that you can use for, um, it, and you know, being comfortable with being a little uncomfortable until you're completely comfortable with accepting yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm making a note. I'm making a note on that one. Okay, good, good. Let, let's keep going. Um, and then, as as folks can see, pride or ego, mm -hmm. perfectionism, um, and past experiences. You know, if you if you've had um, instances where you apologized for something, and then maybe your your feet were held to the fire. Um, or you, you know, were, were blamed about it or made to feel, you know, I don't know, less than guilty, shame. It's like, it can look all yeah. kinds of different ways, but you know, you may have an aversion to, to apologizing and not wanting to inhabit that space that happened. Right, right. I mean, it's really unfortunate because, you know, sometimes as parents, right, the kid comes in and apologizes, but and then the, 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 the parent just has a horrible day at work or has a terrible argument with the spouse. And then instead of, instead of having a conversation with whoever triggered them or with themselves, you know, the, 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 the child comes in and apologizes and just gets berated. And then that child becomes an adult and goes, oh, I'm not going to apologize because all they're going to do is, you know, keep pushing me down, right? They're just going to keep pushing me down and I don't want to get pushed down. And that's a, that's a big one. That, that's a big one. Having a really bad experience when you have apologized where you, you weren't, um, where you didn't experience compassion and acceptance and like you said you know you experience shame and berating and that that's that's a horrible experience <laughs> right 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 and you know also and this, this our conversation may be putting people in a in a space where they're like remembering these kinds of instances in in their own childhood so you know being mindful uh, of that and also that you know everybody makes mistakes Everybody mm -hmm. makes mistakes. Nobody is perfect and everyone makes mistakes and, um, you know, finding a way to, when we make a mistake to apologize is important. And that that's, um, it's a sign of growth, I think. Oh, no, definitely. Um, and, you know, obviously 
small t trauma, so you know, post traumatic growth with these things. And obviously, I always say if you can't go and find help with a, a coach or a therapist professional, you can start to journal and just you know get it out and 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 if you're not too triggered to to go over some of the experiences hey you know when i apologized in the past what happened because this might be something that that um that if you take a look at you find that you you're it's so much easier to say hey i'm sorry i was out of line right 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 yeah and you know just off of what you just said if it's something that happened in your childhood and now you're an adult and and making having that realization that oh it was you know because of something that happened when i was 7 years old but now i'm 37 and you know i can handle things differently and that that instance that occurrence doesn't have to dictate my behavior now right right i like to say oh my dad was having a bad day <laughs> that wasn't about me because the truth is most of the times it's not about you it's all about them so why not just go hey you know he's probably having a bad day i don't i i can just apologize this is not happening anymore but let me go to the next slide yes i i say it with a smile but i think that um that it's easier to breathe through that and say hey that happened you know and um there's nothing i'm going to do about it right yes when something is clearly in the past mm -hmm. right let it go or or um who is it um i think byron katie she says you know what i love about the past it's over it's over yeah Un unless we keep reliving it, unless we keep bringing it to the present moment, right? right. Which is right, exactly, exactly. So some of the things that we can do when you are, you know, when when it's not you, it's about you feeling that it's always about you. But um, when you feel that someone owes you an apology, right? And you know that they're not going to apologize. They're, they're, they're just not, they haven't seen the clarity um, uh, and, and, and healed whatever needs to be healed in order for them to apologize, right? So right. sometimes we're dealing with people who have a track record of not apologizing. Like that's their MO. They don't apologize. Correct. Correct. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And people <laughs> just, just just can't do it right there's there's um there's there's nothing that you're going to do to make them change and you know these are the things that will help you to to move forward from um the fact that they're not going to apologize you know that's their ammo there's not an apology coming they're not seeing a therapist they're not journaling they're not seeing a life coach they're not getting any kind of help so what do you do right how do you, how do you, how do you work around this? Right. And, you know, depending on what the relationship is, sometimes there's, um, you know, it's someone who is senior, senior in a senior position and it's just not going to happen and you're not going to change their behavior and you're not in a position to even really have a conversation Correct. about what happened. Correct. And because that, that really is the first step. If you can have Correct. a conversation, then that is what you should do. Have the conversation about what happened and how you're feeling. But if that's not available, if that's not safe for you, then these are some, some other ways to navigate that situation. Right, and even when you, when you are having a, a conversation, these are also you know, things that you want to incorporate in the conversation that you're having with the other person, right? because your state of mind is going to contribute to how they receive the information how they receive the conversation if you can't set you you, you you can't apologize you can't expect somebody to 
to hear you if you're shaming or yelling at them. They're not going to hear anything, right? If you're basically continuing the same level of conversation. So this is where mindfulness and awareness come in, where you need to take a deep breath in and and know, right? You have to accept the reality. Right, right. And, and you know, perhaps with knowledge, you, you may recognize that there are underlying reasons why that individual finds it so difficult to apologize. And, you know, you have to accept, accept that reality, but also protect yourself, set the boundaries so that you're not um, in the, in, you know, always receiving that behavior. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I feel like uh, accepting reality and setting boundaries and focusing on your response, those are three things that you can definitely use with, with everyone, right? If you're at work or outside, you know, you know, if you're in a traffic and, 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 and somebody cut you off, you know, they're never going to apologize, right? <laughs> That's not going to happen. Maybe your boss will never apologize either. But you can start, um, you know, accepting reality, setting some boundaries, and focusing on your response because sometimes people do things just to trigger you and it's not that they do it intentionally sometimes it's a subconscious behavior that they're they're reliving some sort of issue that they have not resolved and so we find many times where people have you know the similar relationship that they have with their dad or their mom or a sibling at work right so, you know, there's certain people that rub you the wrong way. Oh, is it because they are kind of like somebody you knew or somebody you dated or something, right? And so, you know, focus on your response because you, you don't have to play that game with them anymore. That's about them and it's not about you, right? Right, although if, if, if there is a commonality between someone let's say that you're working with or interacting with you're on a team and and you're bringing in baggage from you know a relationship with a parent or a mm -hmm. sibling then that is very much about you <laughs> that's true that's that's true that's true so sometimes it is about you and sometimes it's not about you but focus on your response <laughs> correct yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> And then in some closer relationships, obviously, and even at even at work, and you know, you, you you can model accountability. You can be the first one to say, "Hey, I apologize." You know, I went out of the scope of of whatever it was. You know, I I I I, I crossed a boundary, whatever whatever it might be, because usually, that's you know that's kind of where it really starts where where you cross a boundary whether it's uh space respect um kindness you know these are the these are the the um the boundaries that sometimes that 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 we cross at work and at home yeah right and and you know if you're in a position of leadership or on a team it it is I think it's very effective to mm -hmm. lead by example and model the behavior. And it also sets the, the tenor for the interactions and gives other pr people permission to, you know, follow suit, right? Right, right. Now let me go into the next slide. So more ways to deal more with ways. Yes. <laughs> to deal with those who don't apologize, um, and I, I think the place that I would love to go to right off the bat is practicing forgiveness for yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a situation that is not going to be reconciled, and if you're holding on to that situation, that baggage carrying that heavy load, 
the damage that you are doing is very much to yourself. And so even though it's not, you know, labeling the behavior as okay, you are willing to let it go and put it down. Right. For your, I mean, for your own well-being. Right, right. And I, and I, I like seek understanding, not validation, because it reminds me of Maya Angelou's famous uh, quote, when people show you who they are, believe them, right? And so if you're in a situation where you have a, a repetitive offender, right, then you need to understand that this person, you're not going to change them. But what you can change is your, you know, the boundaries that you set, right? And with kindness, understand, okay, you know, this is how this person sees things. I'm not going to change somebody's um, perspective because in order to change their perspective, I have to change their perceptions. And, you know, unless it's your child or spouse, you're, you're, you don't really have a lot of, a lot of influence. You can go back to modeling, of course, but, um, you know, you can have some compassion and say, all right, I see who they are. I, I, I understand a little bit about their perspective and, you know, you know, you don't, it kind of frees you from expecting the apology, right? You, you yeah. because it's not it's not you know maybe they meant it maybe this is a lifestyle thing maybe this is a cultural thing you know don't look for somebody else to validate your feeling right because you were offended because it could be a cultural thing on your side right it could be a trigger on your side it could be an issue that you haven't resolved right so you know, understand that it's probably complex, but they showed you who they are and maybe you need to set some boundaries and learn to validate your own feelings. Your emotions are telling you something. Yeah. And I think that goes right into the adjust your expectations because mm -hmm. if, if someone has those difficulties and, you know, they, they do find it difficult to apologize and so they never apologize and you're always on the receiving end of their kind of bad behavior, you can choose to minimize your interactions. Hopefully, hopefully you could choose to minimize. Right. If you can, right. please do, right? <laughs> right, right. Because, you know, sometimes people are oblivious to what they're doing, right? And so you can, you know, dip your toe in the water and say something gently with compassion and say, Hey, you know, um, I prefer that you don't do that. Or, 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 um, would you mind doing this instead? Uh, approaching it with, not with, why do you always do that? Or, you know, more of a, you know, I don't know why this bothers me, but can you, can we switch this around where we're both comfortable? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and ending right there in in communicating, mm -hmm. being willing Perfect. to <laughs> communicate what's going on for you, how you're receiving the behavior, because to them it might be like a nothing thing, but to you it's like such an offense. It's it's such a a, a, a breaking of your boundaries. It's like yes, communicate that calmly and and hopefully bring the relationship forth to you know an elevated area where there's Correct. more understanding Correct. Correct. awesome all right i think that um it's a great place to end it um obviously if anyone listening needs support you know please reach out to us or if you're help you can uh, definitely uh, DM us at any time. I, I do want to, um, you know, just end with this uh, this slide. I think that it, it was probably 
the the um, the stepping stone, right? To understand yourself is always the way to move forward. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderfully said. Thank you, <laughs> and Thursday as usual, we're hoping that we can answer maybe a couple of more questions instead of just one question. We seem to run out of time. <laughs> you know, the, the the issue is that a lot of the questions are a little bit more complicated than yes and no. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> All right. We're going to sign off. Thank you again, Lourdes. And I will see you on Thursday. I'll see you on Thursday.